following year. We've had a chance to kind of land the plane as we talked about last year. It's, it's a bumpy landing, but hopefully we don't knock the wheels off when we get on the ground. So. And I think, I, for me, I've only sat around this table a couple of years, but for me, this year feels very different than in years past in that the collaboration between the town and the schools is very intentional and, and felt at every meeting. Um, I think the work that Julie and Tom are doing together is incredible, and, I, and the process along the way just feels more collaborative for me. We're getting our steps in. <laughs> Up and down, <laughs> stairs. True. That's better, that's better than being in two different rooms and running back and forth. What about this? How about this? No, that's Julie and me. <laughs> so just a procedural question, our timing. Um, by midweek or sometime late next week, you should have better clarity as to where those are. that's coming from. Uh, will the board be meeting any time before the council does? No, your next meeting is the night after, right? Yeah, the we, 18th? we were thinking about that. We, we have the, um, right now we have scheduled the meeting of the two boards next week. Um, yeah. We'll need to be able to report out to our finance committee so that they can make recommendations to our board, but we didn't figure on having any uh, school board action until right. the 18th because it's your next meeting. You know, yeah. they, they've already voted and voted again and there's no point in having Really so, but, but we'll have a sense by the time, by the 17th, the night the council's considering oh, we'll in second have reading. A sense by Tuesday afternoon. Yeah. Really, so, where, and, yeah. and so the council so how would do we amend. Share that, I guess, well, I think the council will be acting before, and this is not out of the ordinary. We've done it in the past, but they'll be acting officially before the school board does. But right. we'll have a pretty good sense that what we're doing is consistent with what we're talking about. Yeah, well, I think what we talked about in the past was that because the school board has to um, acknowledge the adjustments that the council makes, we'll make the adjustments mm -hmm. based on the input that we get from you to the bottom line. To the bottom line, and then when you make your reckon or acceptance or whatever, it's not even acceptance, really. Like it's the, it's, it's the, an allocation of right. the change. Right. Yeah. Then, then that's the opportunity that, right. to pull up the details. Right. So yeah. typically, we at that time when the board goes back and reallocates the change in funding, then that's when we're having a public meeting and we're talking about what the changes are and what, what they look like. So the question I have is that given the amount of the um, adjustment on both sides, respectively, and given the agreement. Um, I would think that there would be an advantage because tonight we are making our recommendation to the full council is to include those adjustments in advance. That way we have just one recommendation to the council and not then making another adjustment. If the school board is okay is, you know, us assuming that the 85,000 as well as Tom, the 165, I'd like to see the finance committee make a recommendation with this adjustment already in consideration. We're giving them just one number and not making well, I think you, that's, you know what I'm saying? I just think it's a cleaner process for the relationship and for the discussion. That's what I heard today is that we're, we'll get to that. Now, how, how they're going to get there is still up in the air, but the commitment is to get to that number. And likewise from Tom, he's going to share with us the details. But unless I heard something differently, I think the commitment's been made to meet that, that target. And that's our bottom line. And then we've got to back it out of the town side, and they're going to adjust on the school And side. remember, at most, we're talking about a recommendation to the council. So right. it's... It is what it is. It's, and it's just not a right. final action. Right. It's, just, it's, right. it's teeing it up okay. in a position that we think it needs to be. Peter, um, the only other concern I have is if we, if you have any adjustments where you're going to try and increase any revenues, you probably want to specify those separately. Otherwise, your yes. bottom line will be cut by more than what you want it to be. Okay. So, okay. on the school side. On the school side. Right. Correct. So it's not artificially low. Oh, right. So because right. yeah. so, like, you had mentioned something about <coughs> at um, this point, right now on the sort of maybe list, we have one adjustment to revenue. So right, if you if you are stating the bottom line on expenditures, um, you might short yourself. Well, I think maybe what we can do is capture a bottom line net budget number, yeah. Yeah. which net is number. which is yeah. the one that controls uh, what happens to get to that will be informed by some of your decisions. Uh, in the coming days. Prior to the final council meeting. 
So, but, so, so if it doesn't happen, if that could be handled with fund balance this time around, and we just make that I mean, if we're talking ten thousand, I would assume even out, even fund balance at the level we're at, we can pick we that up and, and make sure yeah. it, comes it comes to, to the council right. with yeah. sufficient detail. Right. Perfect. I think yeah. there should be enough flexibility. I mean, for yeah. the yeah. And again, we're not. I mean, we're not even sure we're going there. It's just. A well, and we still have intangibles about about the state and everything else. So it's we're, we're unfortunately, as we always are, we're hitting a moving target. And trying to hit it as accurately as we can, and it's still moving. So, right. so, so yeah, well, okay. we can work together to make sure that the numbers go in the right places to hit that net budget. <coughs> right. But I think the timeline will work out well, and that you know, I I think that you could know in confidence that we're going to get to the number that we yes. need to to be at the three, just under three and a half percent. And then Tuesday, we'll have that work to do as a district so that we have. Um, Complete input from the leadership council, which I think is really important, so that they too can carry the messages to the community. Um, and then we'll, we're back together again on the 10th, on the 10th which is where we can, you know, talk to you more about the detail of it and about the changes. And then that prepares you for the 17th. 17th. Yeah, do you want to talk and about what else you might want to accomplish on the 10th as a joint <laughs> full, full board joint meeting? I, I don't remember those in the past. I don't remember what we've done. Well, I, I don't think we had it last year, but the year before we did. Okay. Um, and I think it's just a chance for for people to ask questions if they have questions on. And it's the full council and the full. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think yeah. that's the difference is that we have the full. Right. Um, Everybody's there. Governing so it's body. Yeah, so no if someone's not right. in right. fully engaged in the process and they have questions outstanding, they can solve that before they go to. to right. Vote. So presumably we will have sufficient detail that we can provide a bit of a presentation at the top of the meeting just yeah. to kind of bring everyone up to speed. All of you will be there, but uh, the others won't, and that's really the purpose that that meeting serves, right, is to get everybody on the board. others. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, okay. and that meeting historically, you know, I mean, keep in mind, we, we only changed the process three years ago, and we've even matured into that. That's a leftover, that meeting is a leftover from the former process. So it might be something that the committee, this group discusses on whether it's needed, because if we continue to build a relationship, it may not necessarily be needed. Because everyone, the reason why we didn't do it last year is everyone was on the same page. Yeah, um, yeah. What about this year, do you think? Do you think? <laughs> I still think it's important. I'm just saying is that it should be evaluated on what to do. Maybe it's not necessarily a, a you know, maybe it's a presentation of the budget or, you know. Okay. Yeah. What's yeah, interesting I, is if we look behind us, we'll see quite a few school town council members that have been really diligent about coming to these Sure, and I, but I think it's also I think it's I think it's important to have everybody at the table so that yeah. if who, whoever's not on finance and maybe the, yeah. they might be listening, but they, they have questions yeah, that they have back. Right. right. So at least you know it's it's an opportunity for us ahead of time to address maybe some of those concerns so that when the process comes in regular session, you know we're it's, it's, it flows a little bit better and there's not a quick you know we don't have this so much of you know help me understand this why this why this. Okay. I think there's also an intent to make sure there weren't <laughs> surprises like right, a couple right. of years that we had. Yeah. You know two million dollar adjustment which came out of the blue and no one knew it was yeah. coming. Right. So, um, so let's plan on doing that then. You asked about what else, you know, it's time. So if we get through that, get through the questions, then the only other thing might be then just a conversation around how do we then present to the community for the first vote? How do we, right. you know, any messaging we want to do, how we want to do that. that yeah, there's three and a half weeks between second, you know, final reading and the vote. So there's some time to get around that. Uh, but you may want to do multiple waves of communications on it. And it might be nice if, because um, Kate will be there as the communi communications chair mm -hmm. on that night to sort of bring the communications chairs into that conversation yeah. too while we're all there. Let's put that as an agenda item to make sure we touch on that piece. Yeah. So just to, so everyone knows, I know I've already given notice to my colleagues, but I will not be in attendance that night because of an employment commitment. Um, absolutely can't miss it. So we're talking May 10th, it's 7 o'clock. Is it 6 Wednesday? or 7? I, oh, I had it at 7. Well, I had it, I I had it at 7. She was asleep. Who's got the Easter egg? The Easter egg says 7. That's why it's yeah. on my calendar. Yeah, seven seven. Less less seven. Seven. Yeah. Easter egg said yeah. that then. Yeah. All right, 7 p.m. on the 10th. Someday when I retire and you're still calling the calendar the Easter egg. I think, it, I mean, this is, uh, it. it's the yeah. date, this is our 223, was that the yes, last one? Yes, that was that's the updated one. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, it says that's seven. That's the Bible right there. There, it's the Bible. Wow. Okay. We'll and, then, the and then I think the only other thing is we had had a joint finance committee scheduled for Thursday, the day after, but I'm At not sure. 
I'm not sure we, we need that. It might be yeah. a little redundant. Yeah. So I, I mean, we enjoy I mean, I be there too. I, yeah, so hopefully so. I won't be able to be there too. So let's, I mean, let's, let's plan on not doing that unless we run into some snag, but I can't. Right. If I we're meeting at 7 o'clock on the 10th, we can't we should be able to cover the yeah. <coughs> So yeah. Thursday, we're canceling the Thursday meeting. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Will you let Colette I can't. Yes. I don't think. <laughs> it's been deleted. Sorry. That's the problem. Is that I've got two other things behind it. <laughs> Does anybody else have anything else they'd like to share or comment? Thank you. Yes. Yeah, I, I'd echo this. It's been, yeah. This is, again, my third year, I guess, of this process. And this, it seems to get better each time. This has been a much, I think I echo what Jody shared. It's been a much different process. It feels much more we're sort of all on the same team trying to figure out, you know, where we have to get to and how we're going to do that. So I just thank everybody. And, you know, we were kind of observing even even at the start of the meeting, the whole body language was just a whole lot different than it's been in the past. So that's that's progress. That's good. That's so right. been here for six years. So, yes, <laughs> a lot has changed over six yeah, years. So, <laughs> so thank nice. you to everybody who sits at the table from all the yeah. school board to the uh, administrators and everybody else, so town council. It's and I think great. that um, <clears throat> that sentiment and that uh, workmanship uh, flowed downward. It started with our uh, senior leadership at the administrative level. We really appreciate the work and collaboration your two teams did. I think it's it's evident in the outcome. Yeah. Please do it. So far. <laughs> <laughs> I guess with that. We're excused. I yes. guess Wait, so. Have to, have to, did they make a motion? Mm -hmm. No, they're going to take care of that. Oh, who's there? No, because we have we have our next we have a finance meeting after, and we're going to be doing that. Oh, oh, oh this is just for them. Okay, gotcha. No, I'm yeah. sorry. So are you just having another meeting after? So we're just staying on. We're just here for now. Not that I want to. I thought everybody was leaving. I'll take my I'll take my nameplate and step next door. Yes, excuse me, yeah, I, I, I forgot, yes, that's my bad. Um, anybody would like Julie, Julie Cotter? Would anybody like public comment? Anybody like to say anything from the audience? There's some right there. Pull up a chair next to me. Yep. Anybody? <laughs> she won't She won't bite you, depending on what you say. I, guess, I might kick I guess, you under the table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess there's no takers, so I guess we're okay. okay. I guess we're good. good. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. I think everybody was afraid when you said I might bite them. <laughs> <laughs> There's a method to the madness, Christian.
going to keep, keep rolling. We're, if that's okay with everybody. And I think, Tom, are we, are we good? We're live. We're live. So welcome, everybody. This is uh, Thursday, May 4th. This is the start of the Town Council Finance Committee meeting. Um, and we're here tonight to kind of discuss, I think the town manager has for us, um, um, budget proposals, and we are here to make our final recommendations, prepare our final recommendations to present to the town council. So with that, Tom, you can kind of walk us through yeah. where we are and where we need to what go. What I'd like to do is kind of two steps tonight. Uh, the first, I'll call it round one for your purposes, but in reality, this is round two for us. Before we ever saw the budget, uh, I went back to staff and had a $250,000 reduction at that point. So if I get my rounds mixed up, it's because <laughs> this is two to us, but one to you. And essentially what, what I'm gonna share with you is um, really where we're at with the, uh, the school board or has already accepted kind of their details of their uh, adjustments. Um, and you saw a sneak peek of this basically uh, last time we met. Yeah. It's changed slightly uh, for those, you know, Paying close attention, the, the total adjustment was in the order of 227. Last time you saw it, it's now 219. And I can talk about some of the changes we made, but we had some more time to be a little more thoughtful. Uh, at any rate, our goal was 215, so we've exceeded our goal in doing so. Um, my goal, and Julie's as well, she spoke to it, was, was not to incite um, anger or fear or, or hatred through yeah. these. Yeah. Uh, these are intended not to have kind of overt or noticeable effect on levels of service or, or you know, people's enjoyment of their of their community. They're all kind of internal. And so the cover sheet is really uh, just a, a detail, um, excuse me, is a summary. The next sheet that's double-sided is the particular detail. And for Ruth's purposes, uh, she actually has something that goes down even further if you wish. But it's the same information, just kind of flown up and, and uh, does this cover page include the, the latest adjustments in it? Because this looks an awful lot like the we've got before. But this, this is your round one cuts, right? Not, right. Like, not including the round two. That Correct. Okay. Round two, okay. I'll, I'll bring these separately. So okay. I, I wanted to okay. bring it in two pieces just yep. to make sure we're all on the same page. Yep. So we can go through this detail if you wish, but um, these are these are really things that are kind of internal to the operation. We believe and I'm confident we can accomplish these without any overt impacts. Uh, and if you turn to the third and fourth page, this will look familiar to you. This is our contribution, if you will, to get to that 3.9. Yes. Okay. And again, Board of Ed has adopted their side of this, and so it would be appropriate for this group. And, and so I bring it in two pieces, but when it comes out of you, we'll bring it to the council as a singular recommendation. But I guess for our purposes, it might, do you mind looking at it in two pieces? Um, isn't the order uh, what we approved? Don't we break that out between school and so I think that at least for the purposes of when it goes to council, it needs to be separated. Certainly. Right, but it only needs to be one adjustment. Yeah. Um, one total adjustment based on the original versus what the amended is, the final that we're proposing. Okay. As, as long as the order is in a, in a in proper form, yeah, whatever, yeah. yeah. Right. We'll make certain that those are kind of derivatives of what you're yeah, doing right. here, the, right. the right. outflow or product. Uh, there's probably six or eight numbers on that page will change in the end, right. and, and we'll have that all squared up right. as part of the, uh, the total finance recommendation. So you said two pieces. You want us to kind of take these recommendations, so that first wave that you and Julie worked on as one item, and then you're going to come back with we'll discuss tonight in your second wave that we talked about tonight. Because I think there's some um, decision points on that second piece, and that's the only reason I suggest you take that up right. as a separate piece. So you're pretty comfortable with what, with what was in this first wave. Yes. And we have looked at this, we looked at this the other night, and I think we were comfortable with the manager's recommendations. Yeah. So I think we're okay with, with what we've already reviewed. So I guess the rest of the evening will be spent on Round two. What, yep. what you recommend or wherever you think the, the, the pain points are and what you'd Fair enough. like us to talk about. That's what I would hope you do. So if you'd be willing to take a motion just to kind of formalize this piece, we can move on. So moved. Second. All in favor? Okay. How's these apart? Yeah. <laughs> Um, 
I mentioned some of this, but we'll go into it in more detail right now. Um, the charge given to Julie and I was to come up with 250000 uh, The apportionment to us was eighty five. Um, I did mention that we had the debt expense, and so we've uh, taken that into account as part of this. So let's just kind of walk down through this. Uh, we, the debt would be an add to, yeah. to the expenditure. Ouch. Okay. So it really puts our target at $127,000 to make to still make our target. Um, Ruth has scrutinized various uh, and sundry different revenue lines. You can see them listed there. Uh, we're confident in these upward projections. It's really a result of six more, eight, seven more weeks of experience, frankly. Uh, and rescue revenues uh, is another area. Councillor Hayes brought it up, and I do have a memorandum from the fire chief here, and huh. explaining how we got to this. Really? That's pretty cool. Um, I will say this is predicated on, and my proposal still includes the, uh, the part-time EMS billing clerk, because collections is a big part of it. We're confident that, um, well, I should say, out of the gate, he had recommended an extra 50 on top of over last year. This will be a, a, another 50 on top of that. So we took, I thought in your, what well, we just approved the billing was out of. That was one of the minor adjustments. Um, I guess the, you're right. The, the note was there. I assure you, it is it is not included. We, we simply didn't uh, make that change on the notation here. We can look at the detail and I'll, I'll verify no, that's okay. no, 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 no. So we're so you're just saying when we talked about it at the budget review, we said that wasn't going to be there. You're saying in order to get this 50. We feel like we need to have that to make sure we really uh, do what we can to maximize our collections. And I apologize, the cover sheet you write still included a reference, but I assure you the details yep, okay. we scrutinized yep, yep, this okay. afternoon. Yep. Uh, beyond that, uh, and is the chief here? I just. Uh, he was, oh. he was going to be here at 7. Okay, well, he can, he, can, he can speak to this uh, when yep. he gets here. But okay. essentially, uh, he's committed to doing a deeper dive. Um, and the upshot of this is, to your point, the, the third-party payers, the ones that pay top dollar, mm -hmm. represent 28% of our um, clients, if you will. And so it's a percentage of a percentage. And so it, it gets fairly complicated. Uh, he also mentioned um, and provides it here. Uh, this was an analysis of other rates. Oh, okay. And Great. we're kind of at the upper end of that. Uh, it doesn't appear to be so hurting us. Um, you know, this is one of those services that people are shopping for when they need a ride to the hospital, yeah. they need it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But by the same token, this gives you a sense that we're not terribly out of whack. Yeah. In fact, yeah. we're at the upper end. Okay, great. Uh, but I think... So well, he's comfortable. I'm assuming the, the chief is... He's comfortable, and I think he's willing to do a much uh, okay. more detailed analysis. Uh, and I think he said what he'd like to do is bring it to you as part of that uh, recalibrated staffing plan to maybe combine the two and have a, a workshop to talk about both pieces. Um, this is uh, kind of shifting. This is to uh, down the road. Step, is it, is it yeah, probably early fall. But this fifty is not contingent on. No. Yeah. Okay. No. All right. Great. So that's what we could do in the near term, and, and he's confident that that's uh, that's attainable to us. Yeah. Uh, so the good news on the town side, unlike the school, we have some non-property tax revenues yeah. to help in this effort. That total sixty-three thousand. And so, against the charge of uh, 127, that leads that leaves 64 to come up with. And what I put in front of you is a, a kind of a menu of options. Um, and we can certainly talk about these in detail if you wish. Um, you want me just to walk through and give some description of it, and then we can come back to any one of them as you like. And I, I don't offer these up in order of priority or tell you to do. All of these, uh, these are things that I've identified as well, they'll be noticeable, but they aren't critical to our operations. They are kind of extra value that we've, extra service that we've chosen to provide through the years. And that's why they make this list. And they're also something that I hope they're fairly identifiable to folks so they can understand what they are and what the impacts might be. Some other things, it's a little harder to have an mm -hmm. appreciation of that. Sure. So I just want to be clear, sorry, not to just go back to the um, fire department fees. That this is predicated on accepting the new part-time billing clerk in this budget. Yes. Correct. Yes. So we're adding staff in order to recoup this. 
we, and the difference uh, of this staff proposal as opposed to others is that they're actually going to, we expect is going to pay for themselves in terms of revenues they bring in. I can't say that for other staff proposals, though I didn't have many. Uh, they would have expanded um, quality or quality sure. of service. I guess what I'm just trying to figure out, though, this 50000 is going to be offset by an expense. This this is going to be offset by an expense for the part-time <coughs> billing clerk, correct? Which, which is already baked in. Which is already included. In the, it's already in the, okay. Right. I've not proposed to take it out. Uh, otherwise, it would have been a net of 36 or something like that. I think the position, part-time position with benefits is about 13.3, as I recall. It's, yeah. So, so Chief, he's, he's got you down that you're committed to 50. You okay with that? <laughs> I'm committed to the 50 as long as the 13.349 is still there that yeah. I had offered earlier. And I've assured them, uh, though the note says otherwise, that it is. Okay. Uh, beyond that, I don't want to make promises for you, but um, when we discuss this, this is what you could do in kind of the near term and feel comfortable advancing. Um, a further analysis would take some time, and that's something you can perhaps come back in months ahead in the fall or something like that. Yeah, uh, this is a very complicated issue. Yeah, no, <laughs> There's no, a no, lot of moving no, it paths, is. and yeah. it isn't as easy as saying if we go up on rates 5%, it's going to generate yeah. this dollar yeah. amount yeah. because you're really talking a percentage of a percentage of. Yeah, no, no. Okay. Yeah. I have a question regarding expense. I do have a question about revenue, but I got to think about it first. Um, that's not included. Um, the question I have is about the Higgins Beach extra patrol. Mm -hmm. It says you're reducing it a thousand hours. How many hours are we already providing? There's about 1,500 over and above Pine Point as the example. And so this doesn't totally uh, make it equal. Uh, it still provides some additional enforcement, uh, whether it's earlier in the season or longer each day. I don't exactly know how the chief proposes it. Uh, he is here and can speak to that. But this is a fairly recent ad, uh, frankly, with the advent of the, uh, the parking meters. Yes. And we did have a, a, a very good customer experience, but it comes at cost. So is this eliminating the patrol completely? No, it's eliminating the extra hours and not even all of those. It's 1,000 of the 1,500 extra hours. Okay, so they're getting an extra. So, um, so back to my initial question, what is, what is the current amount of hours? I mean, because I'm <laughs> <laughs> We've got somebody from 10 in the morning until 5 at night, yeah. 7 hours, um, from Memorial Day to Labor Day, 99 days. Based on um, our experience with inclement weather and so forth and so on, we budget 91 days at, uh, at Pine Point. Um, so when we do that, we've got $11,105. That's what we do at Pine Point. Now currently at Higgins Beach, we're running 5.30 in the morning until, until 9.30 at night, 16 hours, and it's also from May 1st to September 15th, 138 days. So that is 38,500, uh, I'm sorry, $38,489. So what we looked at when we were discussing this whole thing is to give Higgins the exact same coverage as including the dates, um, we'd save $27,384. If we give them a similar coverage to Pine Point, but with the additional days, 138 days, um, we'd save about $21,652. And then I looked at, okay, what if we increased hours and played with hours and days and so forth? So I've got kind of a spreadsheet. There's all kinds of different ways you could look at it. Um, 
I kind of looked at a middle of the road scenario that would save about um, sixteen thousand three hundred thirty-six dollars. That's um, taking nine days away for inclement weather, and, um, and and running it ten hours a day instead of the seven. You could get almost to the same place if you ran um, ten and a half hours. So we'd be uh, essentially doing one and a half what is is happening at Pine Point um, and cut the days back a little bit more to 121 days uh, we were budgeted full t we were budgeted the full 138 days at Higgins because the direction was to have somebody there irregardless of the weather so I, I, I've got a couple I got a couple questions around sure that. so um, First question, I guess, would be for Tom. If we start charging for those additional parking spots on Higgins Beach at a dollar an hour or whatever, a dollar or two, whatever the normal rate is that we were going to suggest to, what what kind of revenue would you suspect we could generate? Hmm. Just I'm not looking for hard numbers. I mean, are we talking five? Are we talking twenty-five? Are we talking thousand? Are we well, talking thirteen spaces, uh, one hour? And they're filled most filled most often, yeah. so mm -hmm. uh, so it's. Mm -hmm. And a dollar is thirteen dollars an hour, right? Mm -hmm. Times twelve hours a day. So, so, yeah, so everybody to violates. So. No, no, not one day. Every spot, every, yeah, every, oh, yeah, every, every available yeah. time. Every spot is a dollar for. Right. And you can park from six a.m. to nine p.m. Ten. Ten p.m. So that's actually. Uh, Hours a day. Right. So I guess I guess what I'm looking at from a bigger picture is if we start charging for parking, what does that do to the requirement for enforcement? In terms of could you do that with the staff hours that you're suggesting, the reduced staff hours that you're suggesting here, or would you, if we're now going to charge and now it's more of an enforcement issue, would you prefer to keep that and have that offset revenue if it's a reasonable? I'm, I'm thinking $13 an hour times 13 is that's going to add up over 90 something days. I'm going to do the math as quick as we want, but I, I, mean, I, want, I don't want to. I don't want to get down to pennies. So even, even if we're charging, we need to have law enforcement to make sure right. that people are complying with it. But right. this would be an offset to that expense, right? And I, and I think um, you know part of the. Is, 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 I guess the general question is: Is it worth doing something like that to try and generate some more revenue, or is it just going to be more of an enforcement challenge? It's going to end up costing us money in the long run. I don't think it's enforcement. I think it's more political at yeah. this point, yeah. frankly, and yeah. uh, really for that reason, we've not advanced it. We bought the meter with yeah. that being the expected out ultimate outcome. Yeah. Yeah. When we get there, how much we charge? Yeah. Right. Uh, really. And we held a placeholder matters. in the budget last year. Yeah. Didn't put any money in it, but we held right. a placeholder in there for it. I just did the numbers. It would actually be a wash. So if you kept the uh, extra hours that are being reduced, it's, it's about eighteen thousand dollars in revenue. I was going to say, I think, I was trying to remember what the number was, but I was thinking that uh, we put about 16,000 slips through that meter, I believe. Mm -hmm. I think that's what the number is. It's about yeah. an hour. Yeah. 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 You know, in some ways, so how did we, I mean, when you look at Pine Point, mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot more geographic region in Pine Point than there is Higgins. Higgins right. is pretty contained. So when you think about the coverage for Pine Point, if that's our baseline, mm -hmm. and that's what we're giving to sort of the Pine Point community, mm -hmm. I like the symmetry of saying to Higgins, then that's a similar resource. Mm -hmm. And much like Black, you know, Black Point, uh, Protsnack, if the, there is a Higgins Beach Association, if they decide that they really need that additional coverage, mm -hmm. you know, I, I guess it wouldn't be out of the question that we could enter into some type of arrangement if they're willing to pay for it. But I like that symmetry of saying we really probably should align Pine Point and Higgins. Um, so I like this proposal. Yeah. That's you, want to, you want to ask Pine Point to pay for additional services? With what's going on right now? Well, I, I guess my well, I, hey, that's a whole thing. <laughs> my, I'm just saying. Wow. I'm just saying. My question I'm would be: are, are they are they different um, enforcement criteria? Meaning, you know, Higgins Beach is. I mean, they're not just identical beach communities. There's probably different issues at Higgins Beach than there are at Pine Point. I would imagine. So, is it a fair is it a fair assessment to say you know hours in one is going to be equally as effective as hours in the other, or I would assume there's a reason why there's an offset, that there's a difference in hours. There's something on Higgins Beach that's requiring more attention. Surfers. I'm just I, 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 <laughs> that's what I'm just saying. asking. But it, it's um, hmm. it, it's a public policy issue. Really. Okay. I mean they 
made their pitch and yeah. folks have accepted it to, that they um, want the coverage extended in the year and extended but in the day. Yeah. I'm, I'm comfortable with what's here. I, 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 just, I, think it's I just want to make sure we weren't, we weren't necessarily reducing the overall quality of what we've achieved over the past year. And I don't, based on what you said, it sounds like that we're going to at least stay level. And so I'm kind of happy with that. Yeah. Well, it's not to be leveled to last year. It can't be. It's a thousandless hour. Right. So um, I, I just want to caution you um, making policy decisions, and this will not be well received by some, I suspect, given right. past interest. Right. Um, so I, I caution you whether this is the right time to do it. I don't disagree that it's a conversation that needs to be had. Is this the right time to do it? Um, and I hesitate to putting this in front of you, but we, at this juncture, we just Right. I mean, that's so, the problem. So, it's so right what, if, what if again? And I'm trying to find the sweet spot I, because I'd like to. I'd like to. I'd like to start cranking some revenue out of those meters because we've kind of telegraphed. We've given them a couple, a year at least now to get to get accustomed to it. I know it's not big money, but what if we offset half of the hours instead of cutting by a thousand, we cut five hundred and we, we keep that revenue in and we go a little bit. I know we're talking nickels and dimes here, but I think it's more easing the, easing into that enforcement. You can do some things where they are from an enforcement point of view yeah. and. You know, we need to verify the math, but right. it looks as though you would have sixteen to eighteen thousand dollars in additional revenue, so you could get to the same spot just in a different way. Right. By that policy decision of charging a dollar an hour. Right. That might be re better received than than reducing the notice, right. reducing enforcement. Right. Um, so let's not get hung up on any one of these. Okay. So that's an option in front of you. You might stay right here. <laughs> You may have to referee, yeah. <laughs> um, last year, we brought on a second weekly cleaning for the months of July and August at Pine Point. I'm not picking on the beach communities, but these are extra add-ons. Um, that is at an expense of uh, $12,119. This is a cost to community services, but Public Works actually performs that service. Keep in mind, from um, on Pine Point, from Memorial Day through Labor Day, we clean every Friday and have for decades, yeah. frankly. Yeah. So that's always been the standard. Yeah. In recent years, there's been this red, yeah, red right. algae phenomenon, yeah. and it's fairly noxious and offensive. And yeah. so in response, and some of you may recall, residents came and asked for this extra service. Uh, we're I thought it was temporary, though. I thought it was, it was because of, was that, is that, that algae stuff there all the time? I thought it was just like a summer well, bloom or something that was... It's particularly bad in July and August, and that's why this extra clean is, is there. Uh, frankly, they would prefer us to be there when it shows up because it doesn't respect our schedule, yeah. but it's a fairly, uh, you know, we've got a five-person crew. We've got to get the vehicles down there. We can't do it as a as we call. So this was our solution, and it worked reasonably well. I put it out there, again, not looking to incite people or upset them, yeah. but it's a new service that arguably we could live without. Uh, the other item I suggest, we do have a uh, winter ice rink down here behind the community yeah. services maintenance building. Uh, in reality, we might get 30 to 35 days of skating just with challenges of making ice and keeping ice. Uh, this would still allow us to keep ice and maintain it, but we wouldn't have the staff, we wouldn't open a little warming hut in the concession stand. Uh, so that's still a service. We'd have benches that people could change their footwear, but not the creature comforts associated. Again, not a great thing to put forward, but that's an option. Uh, and last would be in Public Works. You might recall they were looking at replacing their second sweeper. We decided against that. Yeah. And in, in exchange, we're going to hire some outside vendor to assist us for a couple of weeks in the spring to kind of get some of that big stuff out of the way. And we would continue to use our sweeper. We, we will. This would zero that out. So the effect of that is that we'd be sweeping longer in the season, and folks would, would you know, see it on the roads until later in the summer, uh, arguably something we can live with. Yep. And then I put up paving. Uh, frankly, you could go to paving because there's a balance of 277750 there. You could solve the problem of paving alone if you wish. Um, that's not something that people would necessarily notice right out of the gate, but is it good policy? Is, you know, is it something, a practice that we want to get into? Probably not, but again, I put it up there. At the very least, I suggest if you pick one or more of the ones we just talked about, you could use the balance from paving. That's yeah. an easy way to kind of get to where we need to get. 
just, just one question. I think, Chris, and we did the review the other night, you had mentioned that traffic cameras, which was an approach appropriation for 22,000, is that, that would help with the mix, wouldn't it? Yeah, were you able to talk to, to Don Mitchell at all about uh, the consequences of delaying that? I, did, I, I don't know that they... I, I think what was established is that is not a replacement. It's not as if we have it's a, damage. It's new. It's new, so arguably I think we could survive without them for another year. So that, 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 that's a potential. That, that, was a, that was appropriate, right? So that's 22. Can you confirm that? I believe it's right it appropriate. It's so that's, that gives us some legal room if, if you want to do that. And, I know, and Sean, I think you had You've got some thoughts around community service revenue? Maybe. And a little bit. So, um, <laughs> well, I needed to look at something. So the question yeah. I have is that um, are we still talking, uh, as far as the Higgins Beach extra patrol, keeping the 16 free and then offsetting that with the increase in revenue? I don't well, know. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Decide that. But uh, those are the two possibilities, I guess. The, the peril of booking the revenue without knowing how the full council would feel about that proposal, because you'd have to institute a fee that doesn't exist um, has some peril associated with it, but because you be part of our recommendations moving forward though, right? I mean our recommendation sure, would be I, to try and to try and bridge that gap. But here's, I'm just observing it's not a, uh, a simple it's, it's a policy change yeah, sure. and given the amount of interest historically you can expect there will be a lot of people that weigh in on yeah, that. Yeah. The other question Tom I had for you would go in way back in the budget review with the first night with IT. There was something about the C click fix, mm -hmm. which was the public facing portion of that. I know we need it for scheduling and other things. Right. But the public facing portion was worth about ten K. So Correct. that's a, that's another potential item we could push that was that was appropriated too, right? Uh, yes. Um, I want to put my pitch in for that. I, I oh, okay. Think, I, 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 just, really, I, just, I really think that is going to serve our residents very well. It's something that's extremely okay. well received and in every community it's rolled out. Um, and I think if there's one thing that we could advance, uh, it's fairly low, low cost, but I think it will be very well received. Okay. I guess my concern is that we have the staff and the resources to be able to respond to every request for a possible fix. We are now. It's about yeah, efficiency. Okay. Okay. It's about a resident okay. from their smartphone. Um, communicating with us yeah. immediately, and there's great analytics in terms of knowing where things are happening. Um, I just don't want to create another a separate issue no. where people are putting these tickets in and they're not getting responded. No, we think it's actually going to streamline things on the uh, internally as well. It's going to get to the right person quicker, and I think you'll see better responses. So, guys, to get to the 64, do you want to pick the items that we can agree to, and then come back to ones we? Uh, yeah, well, I just, I just a quick question on the pay balance of paving. I mean, I know I, I, I'm hesitant, and again, this, this, from sitting on transportation and watching PACs and all this other stuff going on, um, is this going to, I assume this is going to result in a deferred maintenance of something, somewhere, right? A, a road or two would not get paid. Pay. Right. Sure. Right. I mean, for 6000 it's not much of a road. No, no, if it's if just right. using it to balance, but if you take all 64. Oh, okay. no, no, yeah, right. but 6000 right. would be, that's like a driveway. No, it's like, remember. Well, I, I, yeah, my, well, mine's a little less than that, but not much. <laughs> Please recall, this council has consistently, uh, through CIP, funded something called mid-level road rehab in the <laughs> right. 550 yeah. range. Yeah. Um, part of that is certainly paving, but it's a much, it's more of a reconstruction. It's a, it's a bigger project than simply resurfacing. So uh, we would still make significant, we paint the roads black, people would see some benefit there, and I don't think they would notice that what wasn't happening. Yeah, no, I'm worried more about, again, from the engineering standpoint of, you know, putting a skin coat on and, you know, uh, you know, or not, and then we get to a point of too much delayed maintenance, and now we've got to rip the whole road up to get to the, the, the substructure, and, you know, we're saving six grand to spend 50 exactly. later on to rebuild the road. I, I, that's, I just want to make sure we're not, well, you know. And you, you know more about this than I do, but I understand the town engineer has taken up with the Could transportation committee doing a comprehensive a evaluation of our road. Already. Um, yeah. Systems yeah. and prioritization is part of that. It is. It's several years out, but yeah, I mean, it's it's certainly. I think it's putting us in the right. I, mean, I just want to. I just want to understand. It, it, you know, does this mean you know delaying projects? And you know, I, I know it's not a lot of money, but uh, you know, that's, that would be something to weigh into my consideration. It's, it's not I, I 
I don't know what caused this, but I can tell you the actual expense in that line, though I think the budget was much more, this is 2015, was 77,000. So there are years where we do more than, than others. So again, I think this is something we could withstand if that's what we need to do. Yeah. yeah. Tom, I think, I think the cameras are out. I think they... That was one of the items we... Well, a bigger part. I'm glad you checked. Thank you. And which round is that? That was round, That's round one. That's round two. Oh, well, the ones they just voted on, actually. So okay. XA on the, on the cameras. Sorry, we already, <laughs> we already <laughs> grabbed the low hanging fruit. Okay, I give my contribution. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so I'm glad you brought it. So, so I guess where we are, um, and Chris, I think you, so I think your suggestion was, and we kind of sent things around, you've already talked about the parking revenue. So unless anybody else has got other menu items, um, this is where we are, unless I know Sean's so, working. Yeah, so um, I was doing some math. So a couple of things uh, philosophically. First is, um, <coughs> personally, I, I would like to see the Higgins Beach piece stay in. Um, I mean, what do we mean, stay, stay at this 16? Um, kick it out of the recommendation, so stay in the budget. So you want to you remove the 1636 from this recommendation? Okay. Just to yeah. be clear, these aren't necessarily recommendations, uh, they're options. Right, right. 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 So, yeah. But in, with no offset. No, so the offset, it said, I think that there should be probably an offset equal to that of 16.3 for increased revenues for parking fees. And that the staff be directed to institute a program that captures that on Higgins Beach and Pine Point or somewhere. You need to change your ordinance, which can be done easily, just to, to impose the fee traffic ordinance. Why? And I guess I'm just curious why you why why you kind of feel that that's that level of service for Higgins Beach is. So it's not just Higgins Beach; it is about enforcement of parking. Um, across the board. So if we do it at Higgins Beach, I think it needs to be also implemented across the board at other locations. So how the staff wishes to implement that, um, I think is obviously going to be left to them because that's what they do during the day. So um, I mean, I'm looking at it from a balanced perspective, and that is, um, you pay for the services that you receive. It's, it's a consumer-based service. Which is, I guess, the question I would have to get to the chief again would be. You know, if we reduce not the full thousand, if we take, let's say, 500 out and add those revenues, the, the parking revenues estimated, of course, mm -hmm. um, might that maybe soften that a little bit? Of, way, uh, yeah. You know what I mean? Of, uh, yeah, I'd, yeah, I'd be more comfortable with that. Uh, because I think the end result is going to be the same. It's still going to be. It's a step process. So this right. is the beginning process. I don't mind with that approach. Sh shame on me for bringing this forward. I just can't help but observe that we've moved mountains to get to this point, and it's been a very delicate process, and we'll probably get more delicate in the next three weeks. I would hate to have something as small as this in the big picture um, up to counselors to the extent that um, you know we don't have. God forbid a majority to pass the budget uh, or rile up a residence. I mean, our goal has been to be as. Well, I guess my concern would be I, I think we could rile up, and if someone's going to get riled up, we could rile up some Higgins Beach people or we can rile up the entire town by keeping the tax rate at 4%. Yeah, I'm just saying you have option, other ways to get there, whether that this is the time to have that discussion. Is my point. Absolutely. So I would be happy to withdraw that, and I would recommend community services revenue needs to increase $100,000. <laughs> Done. So let me read it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Todd's out back turning no, right now. <laughs> okay, well, maybe, maybe, uh, wait, can we? What items are we okay with? Let's start there. On, on, on this sort of list that we have, which ones? Debt service increasing by $42,000. <laughs> Yeah, that's I'm serious. It's, yeah. it's part of the summary. We need to approve it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. But I, under the under the expenditure piece that we need, I mean, I'm pretty much okay with the revenue lines. Are everybody okay with the suggested revenues? Yes. Well, yeah. <laughs> yes, but we're, it, and we still need to talk about the parking revenue. Oh no, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. coming. I'm yeah, coming. Yeah, I'm yeah, coming. Yeah, I'm yeah, in there. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. No, I, I don't know if you wanted that. This What's whole here? No, no, I'm just, I'm just trying to go down Tom's list. Yeah. Um, so let's just take. Are we okay with the ice rink? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so let's, we'll take that. Yeah. Are we okay with the sweeper? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Are we okay with the beach cleaning? Yes. 
can we split it? Every other Monday. Instead of doing, we're doing, how many extra cleanings in July? It's two times a week in July and August, if I recall, right? So the Friday is always scheduled. And this is Wednesday cleaning. So we're doing a Wednesday, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, that's eight Wednesdays. Uh, what if we do every other, does that, would that matter? It's better than not, I suppose. I mean, I, so you reduce, so instead of 12-2, you're gonna, or 12-1, it's going to be 6,000. I would say six, yeah. I, I, I mean, again. So I, now you're $2 million dollar budget, $6,000. No, no, no I, I, again, it's part of it is, the, I you know, I, and I'm, I'm, again, I'm looking to staff to say if you think there's going to be, uh, you know, uh, an, an, an ardent amount of pushback, uh, they were pretty adamant about it last year. I mean, sir is equally as adamant as they are at Higgins Beach about the parking. You know, I mean, it's a compromise. So, you know, we're not removing it. I, I, instead of removing it completely and just saying we've taken it all away, we've scaled that back a little bit, yeah. and we've, you know, kind of spread it out. I guess is what I'm thinking. Okay. okay. So that, are we okay with that, Sean? Yes. Absolutely. So that's right. um, six, six thousand. Six, six. We'll call it six one one nine. Hold on. <laughs> so now, so now we do come to the Higgins Beach, and, and Sean, one thing I thought it sounded like you might be okay with. Yes. Was to cut the 16 and well, it was actually Chris saying instead of yes. cutting a thousand hours, cut 500, yep. right? Yep. And then put the fees up yep. and see where that gets us. Yep. Absolutely. That's what I would suggest. So that still Tom's, gets Tom's really not looking at that positively at all. <laughs> he's, he's <laughs> I mean, I understand the consternation. I do. I really do. I mean, it's not. I, it's I, not. I just. Yeah. I want you to to know that it won't be well received. Okay. Which part? Which part? Both parts. <laughs> the no, I, I, actually, I think the this this measured approach is going to be much better because there was always an understanding and an expectation um, that fees would be charged at some point. Exactly. And if you don't start at ten bucks an hour, I think there will be some growth, yeah, but general acceptance. I mean, right. yeah. So you're looking at offsetting this amount. Yes. Well, I, well, I would say, or would it? I mean, yeah, I, we, we'll, we'll reduce whatever, that by eight thousand. We reduce the 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 so half the hours. Uh, so we reduce by five hundred hours, which resulted, in, I'm assuming, eight thousand three three six. Yeah, we'll cut it in half and, and recognize another eight thousand revenue. Right. So. So right now we we need to come up with another fourteen thousand somewhere else to offset what we've just done. We think, based on the limited information I've just heard tonight, that. Uh, I don't think you want 50 cents an hour. I think you want five. Uh, five bucks. So, you said a dollar, yeah. Yeah, so we're likely to to be doubling that. I thought, Sean, your calculation was at a dollar an hour, right? Yeah. yeah. So we could get 16 in revenue. Yeah. And okay. we're going to save $70 eight. $70 a day for. Yeah. Okay. So we'll get yeah. 16 in revenue and eight less payroll expense. So we'll net 24. Okay. okay. Somewhere on the but we'll still I mean, but it, but for budgetary purposes, given the amount, even if you just budget eight thousand dollars in revenue, whatever is extra goes in the general fund, at least it's a complete wash from a budgetary perspective. Keep track of this room. So we're gonna reduce the reduction by eight thousand or do you wanna do the eight eight? Just eight reduce it instead of reduce by a thousand hours, we're gonna reduce by five hundred hours. Okay, and then we Whatever can do the, the calculation. Yes. Yes. I, I get the math to six. Keep 8,000 in there just to make it easier for this purpose. Okay. <laughs> and then we're going to increase parking revenue by 8,000. When's that Celtics I, I would say parking revenue is by 16. Then, then we don't have to raid the uh, Can I just throw something on the table? Yes. Um, please. Just keep in mind that if we don't have, um, if we're cutting back on the number of hours, we're not going to have somebody there 16 hours a day yeah, when parking's available. So yeah. there will be violations. Yep. There will be people yep. that park there more than an hour and yep. so forth. So yep. we can't count on every hour. You'll probably get those calls. Right. <laughs> My yeah, guess is if someone's there more than an hour, you're going to call. be called. Yeah. Somebody's going to be there at 530. Yeah, 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 that's right. Right. yeah, I mean, that's, and I don't expect to get 100% enforcement either. I mean, that's, I don't expect that really. It might be some of the loss so between I, I just, 16 to the To Tom's point, I think it, rather than move it all at once, right. do a hard one way or the yep. other, I'm trying to, you know, every, everybody's going to take a little bit of a participatory I'm, I'm happy to do uh, do it however you want. I just yep. uh, I, yep. I don't want to set unrealistic expectations. Yep. That's all. So, so maybe do you know do eight uh, in ten in revenue? You you said six, you said sixteen, right? You thought so. Uh, personally, I think you should just do eight. Eight. Okay, eight. Cool. That's I really a think it's the easiest then, approach. Okay, so I'm going to move this up. So we're still. But does that mean a dollar an hour? 
Is it, no, it means that you need to set a policy and what you think is the best policy, whatever revenues that we create. We create if it's more than 8,000, it's more than 8,000. Yeah, I'd say a dollar. I'd say 8,000 is simply no, too no, We need to bring to you at your next meeting yeah, the, uh, a recommendation on the, 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 well, the fee schedule. We're going to have to do it in the fee schedule. Yeah, thank you. I mean, uh, Portland's all the traffic for this. Yeah, but once the yeah. start, I mean, I don't want to. No, no, no. I'm saying, but that's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. We raised a 30,000. Right. Okay, good. Yeah. The We're okay with the budget? I'm okay with the budget. Thank and then, and then, whatever we need, then are you guys okay with taking whatever we need to balance from pavement? So I got six thousand. If we reduce tickets and we reduce beach clean by half, we gave eight thousand in revenue. I'm showing six thousand additional that we have to. So we take twelve. So pavement would be twelve. Yeah. If, if my math is correct. Balances. You take twelve out. It's, instead of the six thousand paving for paving, it's going to be twelve thousand now for paving. Yeah. Yeah. Totally increasing. Yeah. yeah. Does that make sense? So yep. let's walk back through, just make sure we're all on the yep. same page. So starting at the top, yep. adding 42000 for debt service yep. expense, yep. grabbing the 63 in revenue as reflected here. Actually, no. Yep. It's going to be... Uh, oh, yes, yeah, sorry. Go ahead, sir. Just, yep. 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 Um, I'm just trying to work down yep. my list. Um, removing the ice ring at 6300 Yep. Sweeper at 2300 1000 1000 1000 thank you. <laughs> um, having the expense... At Pine Point, so six thousand there. Mm -hmm. Reducing the Higgins Beach patrol by eight thousand, yep. and then including parking revenue of eight thousand. Yes. Yep. Okay. And then and every increasing yeah, well, and increasing paving to twelve thousand. Yep. So we're still at sixty-four. We're yep. still at sixty-four. Okay. Are you guys all okay? So the question, yes. Oh, now, but now community service. Thank you. So, no, I, so the questions I have around community, community services, one is that um, I've been on this uh, crusade for 10 years, 15 years, and that is that I truly believe that community services, the, the amount being funded by taxpayers should uh, go down. Um, and the money that should be, the amount that should be paid by consumer use it should go up, regardless of how um, and what services they're providing, because um, it is a consumer demand um, enterprise. Um, looking at at least the budget and the revenue sources, there's a couple of questions I have. One is, I noticed that our leases, um, which go through community services regarding Higgins Beach and Pine Point, so it's Pine Point co-op, and then I guess it would be Higgins Beach with the Bailey's that we just approved? Would that be exactly. the parking at Greenwood and Higgins Beach. Somebody's oh, using the portions. Oh, Pine Point. Yeah, so I know about Higgins Beach. That's with the uh, hotel. Right. Higgins Beach. And then about Pine Point, is that the one with Bailey's? Uh, co-op. No, it's actually co-op. It's the co-op. Yeah, they use the well, use, yeah. The, the leases haven't increased since 2013, if you go back to the budgets. And I just think that need, they need to be reassessed. Um, because it, it's a, it's a big market, and I think that there's opportunities. I'm not saying you need to increase them, um, and they're only five thousand dollars each. But I'm not saying they need to be doubled, but they need to be brought up to market rate. I think that's it's extremely generous given today's market and the benefit that they're getting from that as from a business perspective. Um, but I also, you know, and I, I, to be honest with you, um, you know, I'm being facetious about the hundred thousand, but I just think that there needs to be some incremental movement, which we have not made. We do a very good job. We have done a great job over the last 17 years because it was less than 50 percent years ago, and now I think we're at 87, 86, 87, 86, 87. So I'm just saying that here's an opportunity. I did take a look at some of the components, and you know, it seems like in the past, at least from conversations I remember, childcare is always the first one. When it gets hit because it's the easiest one, but you also can see a decrease in the revenue stream regarding that. And I think that, you know, and I can't manage what they choose to kind of um, increase and not, um, but I think there's opportunities in other programs and not just childcare. So I think you can incrementally move it, and that will help us so you, beyond these. So you're proposing a challenge to put something in this? At least 50000 I, I think there needs to be an, an annual increase. Personally, I think there needs to be an annual increase in the revenue stream so that they take more, uh, take care of more and more of their own uh, costs. So let me just put, I just want to add a couple of points to that. Um, when I looked at back at community services budget over time, if I've noticed that their, their actual tax request in dollar amounts has pretty much stayed consistent, where the reason they've been able to reduce their percentages is because their overall operating right. costs have gone up and they've been funding that with fees. So that, that ask has been fairly consistent from it's around half a million dollars, I think, pretty much consistently. It's been going right along, coming right along. 
So I, 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 I agree with you. There's probably room for, because it seems like that's been kind of a, yeah. almost like a rely on subsidy to kind of keep that going. Um, I would caution about the, the child care piece of it only because we know this change is coming with the schools and people in town may be relying on that service as a stopgap in between. And I would hate, I, I would hate to have, I'm not saying that we have to follow their lead or anything, but I'd hate to have a perfect storm combination where more people are looking to, to community services to supplement that child care because of time changes at the school, and now we've hit them with an increase as well. We actually expect a decrease because of that. It's gonna have a negative effect on, on, on our revenue. And we, Maybe on the aftercare, but have we done the, the pre-care calculations as well? Well, the younger students, many of whom are in the before care, are going to be in class earlier, so they're not going to necessarily need that. They'll be dropped off and the parent can run to work right away. So <coughs> we're anticipating it's actually going to have a negative effect, and frankly, I'm a little worried that we'll start to see folks changing their habits um, altogether. In a, in anticipation of that change, mm -hmm. though it's in your office. So and I wasn't targeting the child care for anything. I was saying to stay away from the child care. Okay, okay. Yeah. But just let me put it in perspective. Um, just so you know, from the property tax support toward community services in the year 2000 was $398,000. In 2018, in this budget, it's 600855 That's against a $2.7 million budget. Mm -hmm. um, the sort of reliance on taxpayers to support those operations, though they have grown exponentially during that period, is pretty remarkable. It's page five of tab, tab, tab nine. Yeah. I agree with you, Tom. I think it should be extraordinary, though. I think it needs to be so, more. So it's grown slightly, but it's shouldered, it's risen from that same time period, a budget of 1.18 to now 2.77. It is shouldered essentially those expansions um, yeah. through fees. Yeah, well, that, that was my point, though. Right. As I was saying, the growth in their budget hasn't been, hasn't, it's been, they, they're growing based on fee-based, and they're still getting the same subsidy from the town year in and year out, basically. Right. So the question is, I think, to, to, to Sean's point is, is it time to start reducing that subsidy a little bit and, and relying more on, on that, that, that uh, fee revenue, you, you know what I'm saying? Instead of having that consistent chunk every year, and, and I, I'm not I'm not advocating one way or the other. I'm just saying, I think from a number standpoint, I, I'm, sure. I'm I'm always curious when I hear or, or cautious when I hear, you know, their their percentage of reliance on on tax base has gone down. It has absolutely, but the dollar value has been basically the same. You, you know what I mean? Roughly speaking. Yeah, we do have an opportunity. I hate to. Um, put this off, but uh, we have a fresh set of eyes. And yeah, yeah, Susan's on right. board. Bruce exactly. has yeah. done a tremendous job. 35 yeah. years, he yeah. is responsible for everything you see. Oh, uh, he's coming up. He's got an answer. Uh, uh, he's, got, he's offering something. He's got something. No, I, I, just, I just know because I've overheard it just in the short two weeks, not even two weeks he's been here, he's peppering his staff with questions already in terms of why we do this, why we do that. that. So I, I expect we're going to be in a different spot just with his uh, attention and a different perspective, frankly. So, Sean, what it, I mean, I guess there's two things. We could either put something in the budget this year, or we as a finance committee can agree to take this up and kind of give them a number next year to kind of ease back that subsidy that taxpayers has been given, give them a bogey and give them a year to kind of pick and choose how they're going to change their revenue streams to get there. I, I don't know if you have a preference on which one of those alternatives you're most comfortable with at this point? So for the purposes of this meeting, I'm comfortable in uh, delaying further conversation until it gets to the full council. Um, I'm, I'm still set in the head right now that something needs to change this year. This year. Yeah. Go ahead. Please. Thank you. No, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was curious. It's a team. It's a team. Yeah, yeah. Just to follow up on Tom, and him being a new person, I get asked a lot of questions about putting you know, challenges in people's minds. We have identified that we will be looking at all of our fee structures as far as field use, facility use. We have some concessions there that are on sliding scales to give people a chance to get their, their revenue stream set up and have those incrementally grow. Um, if the gate passes down to can Beach, how does that affect the extra income on the bottom end of that? How does that return? Um, just looking at our overall facility uses. Looking at this, this number is $248,000 prior to this building. You have this building on and it's a $321,000 bill. 
between the municipality and the school system that community services so I think it's a pretty amazing feat and kudos to the department over the years for for managing that and that fine balance between like you talked about families and services and what they can can afford and that, that right now I think that threshold is going to be very delicate before they choose to just keep their children home and not give them enrichment so I don't want to I don't want to go into that too hard I'd like to look at some of the other private user groups and how we can you know ones that are being profitable you know private clubs or restaurants facilities those type of things before we really tax our own taxpayers anymore um, so we will be looking at those things and we will also be looking at, as Tom mentioned, looking at some of our resources, how of our practices that are collecting trash. Like I said last time, 166 trash cans. You add up bags and time and vehicle mm -hmm. in 54 square miles, it's pretty hefty. And then the increase in using our Pardon facilities. Bags. Doggy bags. I mean, just I mean, Doggy bags. All those, all those probably good things, right. you know. So, yes, I believe that just looking at what I've seen over two weeks and talking to staff, they've done an amazing job under Bruce's leadership to kind of close that gap while, I mean, this building alone had an $18,000 increase. I mean, that's that's a lot of revenue just in one facility to try to offset within a, a flat budget. So uh, I'm up for the challenge. I know we've talked about it. And I think they're all willing to dig in and look at those things. So, so Sean, so you said you're okay with, you still like to talk about, so this would be, I'm just thinking about the process. That would be yeah. So for the purpose of this meeting, I'm willing to uh, push this aside until it yeah. goes to the full council, and then at, at the company, and then then I, I can decide with that information that I just heard uh, where to go with that at that point. Yeah. Do you want? But do we between now and next Wednesday? Do we want to ask them? This issue is that significant to have another okay. meeting or no, not another meeting, but whether they or even, yeah, I ask don't. them if they can come yeah, back you, with anything for. I, 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 need, I need to think about it. Okay, all right, okay. Okay, so I guess where we are, um, thank you. Sure. With those changes we've talked about, are, are we ready to accept what's on here, what we just went through? Mm -hmm. I think there's still more money. They got no still more money. Back no, we're, we're thinking how we're going to get uh, the. The meter programmed and the ordinances changed and everything up and running for more day, but um, we'll find a way. No, I'm, we can, revenue estimate we can is, expedite that. I, I think you're going to exceed the revenue <laughs> yeah, estimate, which so. means that if there's some delay in the. Yep. Yep. So, accommodate it. so with the changes that Tom read off, is there a motion to kind of accept this as. Yeah, I'll, I'll, move, I'll move we accept the. Uh, the adjustments presented by the manager as amended through the through our process. Second. <laughs> are, you, are you okay? I'm looking for something. Okay. So all those in favor? Okay. Just uh, appreciate two things that will come flow out of this will be further changes either in the um, fee schedule. Uh, the fee schedule will certainly have the increased rates, 10% uh, increase. Yep. And I'm not exactly sure where the parking fee is. I think it's in the traffic ordinance, but it may be in here. So there'll be some, you know, those will just flow out of that, that motion. So the question I have then, um, now that we've accepted this recommendation, um, if there are other things that need to happen in ordinance and things like that to make this happen, do we want to? give some kind of heads up to the whole council to say, you know, start thinking about this and maybe we do something. So I can certainly later. initiate that with the appropriate committee chair. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, I mean, not, that's assuming our recommendations are accepted, of course. Yeah. Give a heads up and then the right. oh, Wednesday night. Whatever. I do want to point out on the back side of that sheet uh, includes, it includes a uh, revised tax rate comp sheet. Which reflects this now. This backside reflects what we just talked about. We assumed yeah. that Plus, yeah. we did it based on the assumption yeah. that you were going to get to there somehow. Yep. Yeah. Nothing's been done on the school side for this, though, in terms of a, an order. No, we grabbed the. That's not exactly true. You grabbed their 192. But it hasn't been uh, officially voted on through a. Right, right, but but you're saying at least the numbers we the numbers are here. Yes. Yeah, the numbers we agreed to tonight as a are in this calculation. Yeah, if you okay. wanted to quote the net number, the 63, um, that includes the school portion that they made their commitment of tonight. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> 
and, and so for the audience, the, so for the audience, the as we stand tonight, the mid range of the budget is about 3.49 percent. That's sort of where it can be on either side of that, but that's sort of our target is three and a half. Yep. This puts us in the ballpark. Um, and so with that, I think what, what, what we're going to do, this will be our final recommendation to the full council yep. on the budget. And, and I think that's it. I think that's good. We're there. All in favor? All in favor. Um, we could talk about the, the other items on here with sort of future meetings. We've kind of talked about those. I think I think we're good. Yep. Um, and with that, then I guess I'll open it up to public comment. If anybody wants to come join us, um, I know you guys were mentioning parking a little bit, which uh, that was uh, mentioned to me earlier uh, in regards. Thank to you. Thank you, Chief. Uh, Pine Point Beach. Um, I guess. Uh, over the years, the parking pass for the community has increased, but I don't think parking just for a day pass has increased. Um, I think that's an interesting area that you guys should really look into because, as you know, more and more people have been parking down there, and it, 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 it's not by chance. Uh, over in Old Orchard, they're charging $25 for parking. I have a family staying in a motel there, and I see Pine Point's only about $10. Yeah. I don't mind just driving a car down to Pine Point, staying there, because I'm on the same beach as Old Orchard. The only thing I'm missing out on is maybe the pier or anything like that. So maybe that's an area that you can look at to finding some more revenue. Um, you could probably move it up to 15. People are still going to come there. But as you guys know, people are starting to park on that way that's about to be changed. So I think that that could be a good spot to look at. Um, it definitely says that people are noticing there's a difference in pricing, and it's Way it's worth it to stay down there. So, yeah. great. Thanks for sharing that. Anybody else? Uh, <laughs> of course. Oh, come on. Yeah, uh, yeah. I would be shocked. Yeah. You were. <laughs> Gonna ask us to spend more money? There's no camera in here, Yes, there's two. Your smile. Say your name. Yeah, I've got your timer as usual. Yeah. Larry Hartwell, not <laughs> pure and dry. Did you spell that? Time? <laughs> I haven't changed my name nor have I moved since last night. <laughs> <laughs> um, on the excise taxes, you were able to come up with another two hundred thousand there. How about another ninety-six hundred dollars to uh, fund the part-time position in the library? And I don't know where we are on, on the bonds. I kind of got glazed eyes last night, so. I'm still looking for the 150,000 to support that for the for the, uh, the library, so that they can start the process moving through them. To have an addition on, on this uh, library that's over 25 years old now. So tonight you've uh, you've really gotten down into the details as you have at, at many of these meetings and, and really gotten into it. Um, and that's great. That's great. Um, my concern, or as you've heard before, is the school budget. It represents two thirds of the budget. There's no debate there. So if we're going to cut, if we cut a dollar, they should be cutting two dollars. So just going by this, without your adjustments tonight, we're looking at we've made adjustments of almost six hundred eighty thousand. They've made eight hundred and seventy thousand. So there's no proportionality here as far as what they're bringing to the table. So that's pretty obvious. Using this sheet here on the expenditure side. And I just wanted to really clarify, there's actual direct proportionality. The difference is the town has other non property tax revenue sources, whereas the school doesn't. So from an expenditure, reduction of expenditure point of view, there is direct proportionality, two thirds, one third. The last, the last two big adjustments have been yep. allocated that way. Okay, I know. So we're, we are trying to stay in lockstep and follow that same path. Mm -hmm. um, you guys have worked really hard on reducing expenses, reducing our, our expenses. You know, our, our fire department, police department coming in at 1.7%. Mm -hmm. 
overall the budget's now 2.1 for yeah. the municipality. And as you folks know, uh, that's this is not the first time that their budgets have been at that yeah. low level. Right. And we and Tom and, and his his staff have been able to keep the town side really low each year. Done so a great job. Maybe three percent. I don't know. I'm just pulling a number out. Maybe three percent or less. less. Probably yeah. less. Less. Yeah. So when I look at the school adjustments, okay, school insurances, yes, it's a refinement as it is every year because we don't know and you need to come with a high number because the insurances are all over the place. So your school district or the town or individuals or company, you don't know if it's going to be 5% or 15%. So I can understand that being high and now being reduced because it came in and we got a good price on that. That's great. Um, and similar on the, on the salaries and benefits. But we have items that get moved from the operating budget to the bonding side. So we take a current expense, and now we say, oh, let's bond it for three or five years. And now, this is great if I'm only looking at the dam, uh, the mill rate. And it's like, okay, we can bring that down, but we haven't changed anything. As, as I can't remember which, which form I was at, where I said, well, okay, we have monthly expenses, each of us do. If I take, and I have $100 worth of expenses, and I put $30 of that on a credit card, I reduce my operating expenses by 30%, and I haven't done anything other than now I'm gonna pay 18 or 22% on that. So, I don't see that as being really honest. It is, you know, our goal is always, it's only on the mill rate, so um, I think for me, it's smoke and mirrors on the school side. And we've done that on the, on the town side too. We've moved a number of things back over to the, the, the capital side. Now, if I'm totally wrong on that, please let me know because I don't like to be inaccurate when I'm speaking. Yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, it's, it's really complex and I think, you know, your observations are here. On some of the some of the, the transfer of funds, it's been, and actually the Finance Committee the last couple of years have taken a look at that. We've, traditionally, historically, had put a lot of stuff that may be more operational into long-term financing. And we've tried to start to move that back into operations as it should be. And so some of the changes that were made, this was the first year that some of those things were flowing in. So that's some of the rationale behind, you know, doing, doing what we did, so. Well, I can see that in the initial proposal, but then when we came down to time to reduce yeah. the budget, then a lot of things just slid across on, on both the town and the, and the school side. And the school budget starts out with gra grabbing the reserves, the, the uh, fund balances, and putting $2.4 million in there before they even started. And, and we we're still looking at 10% increase in local funding there. The, the discussion by them and by members of the council is, oh, state funding has been cut by $1.4 million. That's not our problem. Let, let's be accurate, though. The, the fund balance is 2.1, not 2.4. Okay. And the school budget, even out of the gate, was not 10%. It was 9.8. Well, uh, numbers matter, frankly. Well, okay, I did. You know, actually, if I could, if I just point a parliamentary procedure, if I could, I'd really rather not conduct a debate here. I mean, I don't mind public comment, but, um, you know, I, I, I don't think this is the appropriate time or the place to have a debate with citizens of the town. I, I'm nothing against you, Larry. I'm happy to listen to you. I've, I've heard it. I've got it all down. I just, I don't know if this is an appropriate spot for debate. Okay. I understand that. I apologize. Didn't expect it to have No, that's okay. I, no, I, that's just, that, that was through the chair. That's, so we're all good. It's, it's, it's his prerogative as the chair to, to, to decide how to run it, but. No. Um, if I could, I could three minutes. Uh, I'll give you three. <laughs> State your name, please. No, say my name. Will Rowan, I live on Bonnie Brook Drive. Um, I've heard this number a lot about the the 2.1 uh, million in the unused, unassigned fund balance, as offsetting the 1.4 million loss. But I think it's really important to note that last year we used four point, excuse me, 425,000 
in unused, unassigned fund balance. And we also had uh, unused Wentworth project funds of $1,569,553. So that's really where that 2.1 is offsetting. <laughs> we're still losing that, that uh, we're still down whatever it is, 1.3 from that, from those revenues. So I think it's really important to know that I've heard that a lot where people say that we lost 1.4 and we then used unused fund balance at 2.1 and hey, aren't we up? But we're really not, we're really offsetting funds that we've lost ne next year. <clears throat> so now we are using that 2.1 million in fund balance and so that's, uh, that's a uh, hole that we're gonna figure out for next year. Yeah. But um, we're all aware of that. Um, one other thing I want to notice, I'm sure that uh, all of you are watching uh, the Ordinance Committee um, <laughs> this, this afternoon uh, in preparation for coming here. Um, but something that we did do was um, the senior property uh, tax relief. Um, we, um, it wasn't on the agenda, um, but uh, a citizen approached me um, Tuesday night um, and uh, made, a, made a great argument toward the fact that um, that hasn't increased in 10 years. Um, this is for the low, um, this is the maximum amount is $500. Um, yeah, we fixed the program so that more people would qualify, but um, for the last 10 years, the maximum amount has been $500. Um, meanwhile, you know, property taxes have increased every year, and this year on the average house in town, the, the property tax is gonna be up at least over at least $100. So um, the, the proposal in the ordinance committee was to increase the maximum um, dollar amount from $500 to $600. Um, we did... Uh, What's the net effect? Yeah. So the net effect is that we have reserves for the uh, senior property tax release. The net effect would be a $300 um, impact. Um, and three, 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 what did I say? 30, no, 30,000. <laughs> There's Sorry. roughly 300 people that have been eligible. We can assume that there'll be a similar number. So the math. Yeah, so, so it's a 30,000 dollars impact, of which there are reserves of 64,000 dollars. I, I just want to caution again. Like, you know, there's all kinds of different ways to to uh, expand this program and make it beneficial. We can either increase the amount for the existing number of people, or we can add additional funding and broaden out uh, the number of people who, who qualify for 500,000. I think that's a very, I, I, I think that's a really complex discussion to have. I, I support it 100%. I don't know if we can do that in this budget cycle. I completely, I completely agree that in the budget cycle that that would be a much more complicated right. thing to say, like we could expand the number of people that are eligible, we could, right. we could also look at doing a cost increase, right. uh, of, of some kind of index or cost of living adjustment. Right. Those things would, would take a significant change to the ordinance. This was a very minor change where we crossed out a five, we wrote in a six on, on, on the budget. There, there are reserves to offset it. I, I, you're you're I proposing know, this year. It, it is proposed for this year. That is ordinance of authority. It's, it's an ordinance. Yeah. So the amount an ordinance. It would need to. It's an ordinance change. So it will come to the council. Council. It will come to the council. It's, it's a proposal. It, yeah. And I'm, yeah. I'm in my three minutes. Minutes. No, 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 Katie Foley with Three Lucky Lane. I'm just gonna make a real quick, well, a couple things first. Really impressed with your work. Um, I, I'll get shot for this, I'm sure, but I, I'm, you're making tough choices and good choices and we're getting this to where it needs to be. And so I'm really pleased with that. Um, would always love to see it lower. I think we all would, but uh, I'm gonna make one quick plug. If you went back to the Higgins Beach Patrol and you put those, put those $500 back, so it was about $8,000, We'd only have to find like fifteen hundred more dollars to fulfill our library's request of that half position at ninety, whatever it is, ninety-five. And I, I just feel like I think that's an investment that's been asked for for a long time. I hear amounts of money talked about as drops in the bucket here, there, and everywhere. And I would love to make that happen for the library. It is an incredible resource for all ages, and uh, I. I we can make it happen. I'd be happy. Thank you. Thank you. Do we actually make comments this time for three minutes? Can we do that at the full council meeting? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs>
policy change. There you go. I like that. I'd be the guiltiest one. Dare I ask if anybody else like like to any follow up comment from anybody else? Guess not. So I guess with that, um, I guess these last few items, I don't know how to what our process should be. I guess this will be part of our conversation Wednesday night. What which what, what, the, the, the the two comments that we just had there is yeah, I mean, I, it certainly it certainly warrants a, a discussion. I think it's 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 challenging. I think based on the work that we've done to just kind of have this kind of come in yeah, now and like have it. to have to balance that somehow. I okay. think it's an absolutely valid argument, and yeah. everything that's been put forth. I, not everything, but I think the ninety percent of the stuff put forth on the school side and in Tom's budget and everything else has been valid. Yeah, no, it's right. it's really just yeah. kind of making those those tough. Calls. Just you know the way the senior property tax program works. Uh, essentially, we do have a reserve account. I don't know the exact balance, but I'm, mm -hmm. I believe we can cover that expected additional money there. And the way it works is that if if requests exceed the, the budget amount, we're authorized to. Uh, immediately go to that to, yeah. to fulfill those. Correct. So there would not need to be further council action in that regard. We've also done that this year. We, mm -hmm. I guess, the, and the question is, is that if we if we keep it at 500, um, the, I think the question I've heard was, uh, uh, if everybody that's eligible is participating and we know that's a set amount, then I would agree 100%. It's easy to just say, okay, we just up it to 600, and now we can control that cost. I would hate to have us run out of funds. I'm not saying that the, the increase isn't justified. I'd just rather do it a little bit more, with a little bit more thought to it. I, I, I believe an indexing pr a process is probably a lot better, um, you know, to find some way to do that, and then we address that every year in the funding issue side of things. Because I do think it's, it is really, I think probably the best thing we can do with our resources is to help the people who really need that help. And and I, I think that's where the discussion would be is, you know, do we, I'm not saying it's a bad, you know, it's, it's a great uh, opportunity. It's a good opportunity for discussion. I don't know if just increasing it to 600 seems like a very easy, quick fix. I don't know if it's better to, to just say, okay, now we maybe reduce the requirements a little bit more and get more people into the mix instead of increasing the, the value to 600. The challenge with, with those sorts of modifications is the uh, estimating Eligibility mm -hmm. and, and therefore cost is right. more challenging. Yeah, absolutely. I, I believe this was chosen because it's much it's much easier to sure yeah. But easy isn't always the necessary, the most effective. But I but I understand that. I, I'm not. I mean, again, I'm not. I'm not saying. I'm not saying I'm against it. I'm just saying I, I really think it, it deserves a really good thought out process. I, I think we need to revamp it. I think it's that statement is poignant. This is a this is a band aid fix to a bigger problem around taxes, and it's a bigger conversation. And there's other communities that have already looked at. How do we provide relief? And you know, I'm not suggesting that I'm in favor of it, but I would like to have a conversation. So I think it's the town of York that actually has a program in which, based on certain eligibility requirements, you can actually postpone the payment of your um, school subsidy tax, um, in which the town, there's a budgeting impact, and you and I talked about this, and I'm not 100% right on mm -hmm. it. But basically, it's put out because of state law, you still have to charge them, but then I think there's it's uh, leaned against the property until there is a transaction, a sale, or a transfer, oh, and it's yeah. collected later. And yeah. there's implications from a budget, uh, from a planning perspective. I think uh, what I'm saying is that uh, I'm in favor of this quick fix, but it does not solve any problem at all. No. Um, and that there needs to be a bigger conversation about what to do. And just to put our program in context, I've been contacted by dozens of communities. To my knowledge, we have the most. Uh, Robust program of any community in the state in terms of uh, for this target population. So I guess just for our process, I mean we we had talked about approving and we approved the manager's recommendation to get us to where we are. Do we want to open that back up and talk about this, or are we for now good where we are? And this may be a further conversation. And if it's um, what I would like to suggest um, as chair of the council is um, I know that other chair persons have done this um, is that I will uh, send out a request to all the counselors to ask in advance what their um, recommendation for any amendments are so that we can then organize those properly so that it's a really kind of chaos um, for that, that budget meeting so that we know you know where they all are and then um, how we can go about that in a very simple process and um, thoughtful one so that everyone understands. Thank you for that. That's helpful for us to have a sense of that 
my goal is not to talk anyone out of an amendment, it's to make sure it's offered properly and we know yep. what the yep. consequences are. Yep. And that's my goal too. Yep. Sure. Yep. So we'll collaborate to send out yep. that communication to council. So what we'll do then, Ruth and I will work to prepare a single consolidated recommendation that will capture both steps tonight um, for the council's consideration. And history suggests the uh, Finance Committee offers up that as the First Amendment, and council considers it, uh, however they will. And then, of course, further amendments um, available after that if people, individual councilors, want to move them. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody right. moves to adjourn. So moved. Second. Thanks, everybody.